What's up, everybody? Good morning. It is Travel and Talk Tuesday. I am back from vacation. Yes, I am. Oh, so let me start off this morning with already letting you know. No, I have not watched Power. No, I have not watched Real Housewives of Potomac. They will be watched possibly today. And the recaps and reviews will be up within 48 hours of me watching it. That's always been the rule around here. Um, what else I haven't done? Haven't watched Power, haven't watched Real Housewives of Potomac. I think that about sums it up. Okay, so yeah, I went on vacation. I went to Phoenix, Arizona. Um, my whole intent was to go check the area out to see if it would be a place that I would want to move. The current consensus, not so much. And it's not that it wasn't a nice place. Uh, when I first got there, as soon as I got to my hotel, a, door, a dust storm hit. And I was like, oh, it look like a dust storm over there. Like, I've been in the Middle East, and over there, we get dust storms, baby. I mean, they come and they envelop the whole town. That's what was happening right there as soon as I got to my hotel. But I think by the time it got to where my hotel was at, it was like a breeze. I was like, this is feel like a nice little breeze. That's how I was feeling. And then um, I was watching the news later that night, and it was showing how it was knocking out people's powers and all kind of stuff went on. I was like, my goodness, that was a deep ass uh, dust storm. It was, y'all, 115, 16, 17, 18 degrees the entire time I was there with the exception of Monday. Hot. Hot, baby, hot. And it was like, well, at first I kept saying, if I kept moving, I'm all right. As soon as you sit still, like, right around, like I'm sitting still at this red light, you burn the hell up. My phone, it kept over, I mean, it overheated almost every 20 minutes. I... I could tell I was the tourist because nobody else in town was riding around with their windows down. Cause I'm like, I don't necessarily have to have my air conditioner on. All the reason why I got it on right now is because I'm recording this video. But I'm like, I'm not a person that have to have the air conditioner on riding around. I like to get that breeze, you know, that, that breeze in from the car. <clears throat> so I was cool on that, even in the 116 degree weather, I was cool on letting that breeze hit me, but my phone kept overheating. And I was trying to get video footage for you guys. Like, so I had my cell phone camera. I had my actual camera as well. My actual camera overheats in St. Louis. So I was like, oh my God, this gonna just like. So my video footage is not as much as I thought it could be, but I think I got enough to show you guys some things that I did. Um, so that was day one. Um, I went to my, my favorite burger joint, In and Out. And I was not as pleased as I normally am with in and out Burger. <laughs> the fries was nasty as hell. I don't, I don't know what it was. They didn't, I don't know if they normally don't put season on it. Because I, I remember my fries tasting good. But this one didn't. And that kind of threw off the whole meal for me. And something was off with the lemonade as well. Um, I never, ever, ever ate at any Mexican place. Everybody kept telling me the best authentic Mexican food when I was in Phoenix and I never ate there. I was looking at the different menus of the different Mexican food places and they all reminded me of Alberto's in California. That's just like fried roll tacos and stuff like that. Um, I can get that here on the south side of St. Louis. So it wasn't nothing that really was drawing me. Um, I do go to this little Mexican place here in St. Louis that you know um, I think is really good. And my girlfriend Chelsea was saying that um, this place was like awesome, like that. They gave you big portions. But um, anytime I would bring it up to people that actually live in Phoenix, they was like, ah, it's like you know. Um, I was told to go eat at this place called Carolina's, and I looked at the Carolina menu and it looked just like Albertos or Filipinos, which is the same as Albertos in California. So that's what they basically was. just some like it was some knockoff of Albertos, it's Filipinos, it had Robertos. Um, it's another one somewhere. If you saw e those, I think that's all the same people. That's what I thought. Um, so I never ate there. I ended up at this pizza place called Fired. I've been to a place like this in another city. I can't remember where it was where you go in and you tell them what you want on your pizza. They do like an oven brick pizza make for you. This was so good. 
It just has simple ingredients. Simple ingredients. I put a few pictures up on Instagram, so if you follow me on Instagram, you will see it there. So that was pretty good. Um, my old friend, uh, God bless it. Let me tell y'all. Just, just, this is just reminding me right in this moment. The entire time that I was in Phoenix, I had no road rage moments. Not any. None. They had wide lanes. There was no potholes. People were speeding, but people weren't tailgating you. Um, it, it, it traffic moved. Traffic moved. The only time traffic did not move um, was when I was at the airport. You got a little jam pack at the airport trying to get pick uh, pick Kena up. When I left the airport, I didn't have a problem. But the day I picked Kena up on Sunday, traffic was pretty bad at the airport. That's the only time I had traffic. It, Phoenix is like 70 miles wide. The city itself. No traffic. It was easy peasy. And I pretty much had to take the highway almost everywhere I had to go. But it was pretty much easy peasy. Um, so, I went downtown. Phoenix, you know, drove around there. It was too hot to walk around it was because I was going midday um, and they said this was one of the hottest seasons they ever had in a long time but when it got down to like the temperatures that it would normally be 105 it was still I was like okay I'm, I'm breathing fine feeling fine but if I sit still too long I had sweat dripping from my elbows that is very uncomfortable very uncomfortable um, the whole city is beige the highways is beige. You know what? Our highway is not beige only because it got so much fucking oil spills and drops and on the highway. But the highway was beige. The buildings were beige. They had big walls up around the communities. And we could only guess that that was because of the dust. There was three dust storms in the five day period that I was there. So I'm assuming that it's because of the dust that blows through. Like, other than that, the air quality is nice. I, I was like, <clears throat> like now I'm sinuses draining and stuff like that. I didn't have any of those problems while I was there. Um, I say even despite the heat, I was feeling fine. I was feeling lovely. It made you drink water. I'm telling you, I was killing my water while I was there over 100 ounces a day. I was killing it. And since I've been home, I can't even get to this one little dog on 16 ounce bottle. But my sinus is draining right now. So I was like, as far as health wise, my glucose was registering the lowest that ever since they told me that I was pre-diabetic I said I was going to try to get back down to 95 which is like normal for me was was my normal I was hitting like 97 the whole time I was there my blood pressure was low I mean I was in a peaceful state of mind so if I if I just want to get my peaceful state of mind I think I might venture there I, I just don't know about living because the beige got to me all the buildings, it's like they use the clay and the clay turns brown. Everything is done with that. Everything was so beige that the people started looking beige to me. Everybody, black, white, Asian, everybody started looking the same to me. But you, you, there's some black people you can tell. Um, the black people aren't as friendly there. They don't speak often unless they, unless they your server in the restaurant. But other than that, on the street, you don't get the hey, what's up? You know, we do the universal. They don't, they don't do that there. My friend told me it's because that area is supposed to be a witness protection straight. I don't know. I know it's one of the states with the highest kidnapping rates. I know that. But, I don't know. It's just, um, when I was missing green vegetation, like the, the trees all seemed like they were suffering. But people I did meet there, I met some really nice people. They were all like, move here. And all of them or not from there. One guy was from California, from Silicon Valley. He said he still works in Silicon Valley. He just decided to move to Phoenix and he, he commutes. Another guy and his wife, they had just uh, moved there about a year ago from Cleveland. And they loved it. His wife said she liked Tucson better than uh, in Phoenix, which I didn't make it down to Tucson. And, uh, but he was like, he loves it. You know, he got family there. And he was like, just move her, just move her. And he offered me places to rent. Um, he, speaking of rent, Zillow.com, Truila.com. Be very, very cautious when you're on those websites. Majority of those listings are fraud. 
Um, initially, what I was getting was people were listing properties for rent, and then you go back a day later and it's gone. I figured, oh, the, the community is popping, the, the rent is going that fast, and they, or they have properties on there that's been on there for 285 days. And the moment you look at it and say you favorite it or something like that, it disappears, it's gone, it's no longer available. Well, these are uh, real estate companies that are trying to pull you in as a customer. So they list properties for rent that really aren't for rent, okay? They just want, you call them up and be like, hey, you had this property for this thing? It's like, oh, I don't have it anymore, but I got this. Because they never had it in the first place. These places were never for rent to begin with. If you go on the for sale list, after you find out that the property is gone, you see that property for sale. Bet you're down to a dozen. The second thing that I find is that there's a lot of people on there that they do this, they was doing it on Craigslist a lot, but they done it on Zillow and Trilo and, and uh, rental.com. These people are listing properties for rent that they don't even own. They're collecting application fees and deposits from people and they never rent you out the actual property because it's not theirs to start with. Um, I had a lot of people, like I set up appointments to actually go view properties, never, never, ever called me back, right? go to a couple of these places and this people is already occupied by the home owner not by the renter and they didn't even know that their house was on on these places for rent mine was on there like that before my house before and i had to take control of mine on zillow um but yeah it will be very very so i never saw any place that that was listed for rent and then um i've made a complaint to zip i made a complaint on twitter and i tagged zillow with it and it was like oh yeah contact our customer service I think y'all know Zillow. I think y'all know. Because now every single one of those places that I had contacted and booked a tour or whatever through to try to rent a, a view, all gone. I can't find the listings anymore. Every last one of them, I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe in coincidences. Zillow, y'all got something to do with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that real bad. So be very, very cautious. So the best thing that I think to do is try to find local rental places or local real estate companies and, and look at their rental listings yourself. But like I said, I do know that those some of those rental companies will go onto these sites and uh, put up fake listings. It was on one that um, Keenan and I was looking at last night and he had the property name and then another one had a list of an actual agent name that was renting this particular property. He had a property company agent. Yeah, okay. Two totally different lists of the same property. Same address, but all the details, not all of them, but majority of the details were different. I was like, something ain't right with this. One of them says pet friendly, one of them says it's not, but it's the same house. And then I looked at, I mean, I researched a little deeper. I mean, we went to Truila to go look it up too. Look a little deeper and come to find out it's the same person listing both of these properties. You can't call them though. These, especially the ones that you gotta look out for that says, due to the numerous amount of phone calls that we have for this property. Yeah, it says due to the numerous amount of phone calls that we have for this property, um, don't call us, you can text only. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense that a rental property company would tell us don't call us. They're lying. Look at the area codes for those phone numbers. Majority of them don't live there. Because they're fucking lying. So yeah, it just just be very cautious. Um, I hiked a mountain. It's a small mountain. It's one of their smaller mountains, but I hiked one. It take me long to get up. Got to see some little views up there. So I hiked the mountain. I was sweating my butt off by the time I got to the top to the top, but it was only a five minute hike. I'm telling you, I, it's, it was hot out there. I went early in the morning. And it was already a hundred. It was almost a hundred degrees every day I woke up. Um, I went to a mystery dinner theater, and I should have won. Oh, I should have won because I did. I was at an uh, anime con about two years ago, and this was the exact same storyline. I was like, something about it seemed familiar, and it's so weird. I get this all the time. Gay men like me. Gay men always flirt with me, and I've had a lot of gay men proposition me. For sexual encounters, they would tell me I'm gay, but I find you very attractive. And if I had to sleep with a woman, I want to sleep with you. That type of stuff be happening to me. And I had a gay man that was there in a 
at the Mystery Dinner Theater that kept on propositioning me. I just, just found that very strange. Is the road open back up? We're marching this way now. Oh, this looks like a little on the Cleveland. Cool beans. The road is open back up. I know my boss is going to be like, oh my gosh, she's here. I'm late. I'm late. I know people waited to see if I was late. It's 10 04. I had no reason to be late today. But check it, y'all. I had to turn my air up because the phone started overheating. Um, the moment we landed back in in St. Louis, I felt emotionally drained. And it was so weird because I was sitting there feeling like this. Like, why do I feel so sad right now? And um, the road is a lot of construction, so I apologize for all the bumping. Uh, I was feeling like, well, I feel like so sad right now. And then Kina was standing next to me in the bag is playing. And she turned, she said, it's just me or are you depressed to be back home? It wasn't just her. It's something about my city that I love. I love STL 314, rep it every day, all day long. But it's something about this city that pulls on my energy in a negative way, which is, that's what tells me it's time for me to leave this city. It's time for me to move on and go to somewhere different. Um, when I every time I leave here, I get such euphoria, and then when I come back, it just pulls me back into a negative space. I've been bitching since I've been here. Like I said, my sinus has been draining. Things been getting on my nerves. I got on Facebook. I haven't been on Facebook. Uh, I've been on Instagram while I've gone Instagram and Twitter. I got on Facebook this morning and I wanted to tell every other post, shut the hell up. That was, it's just something about my atmosphere that is doing me in. Well, little Miss Keenan, like she was in LA. Apparently there was a heat, a heat wave in LA too. And she says like 115 and stuff there the whole time she was there, so she was hot. She got to Phoenix, it was 90 degrees. You think that would be good, right? It's 90 degrees. Yay! A dust storm hit again to the point where we couldn't breathe. Like I said, I like to ride with my windows down. I was like, you don't look that bad in the air, is what I was thinking. Let that window down and started choking. Oh, uh, Kingdom was like, oh, oh. The next morning, I got her up so she could see Venus. We drove around to a few places and she was like, why is everything so beige? <laughs> everything. And my baby was in this car three minutes and sweat was just pouring down her face and her back like her setting spray didn't set it just everything was just dripping it's just like you see the lip gloss we got on her, my lips her whole face looked that way and she was like i can't do it i can't do it <laughs> it's like the air is supposed to be better but she just kept noticing everything's brown the business is normal business that you, you see like white castle no white castle be brown um dairy queen you know it's like black white red and you don't see all that a wells fargo sign is the only thing that like really jumped out at me because it kept a red and gold sign but other than that everything was brown everything i don't know it was it was a weird feeling but i'm almost at work it's a whole i'm on a good very very road with a lot of bumps and i'm sorry about the quality of the video i'm i try to give y'all a little bit more about my vacation i'm probably gonna do a second travel and talk this week on Thursday, um, right now, it's time for me to get myself together and uh, get to work. Luckily, this is like the slowest day of the week, so I should get in and out of here within about three hours. Y'all enjoy y'all Tuesday. Um, like I said, if you're looking for power and real housewives of Potomac within the next 48 hours, I'm not going to be rushing to try to get those dogs on uh, recaps up. Somebody uh, put on one of my other videos. It's like I've been waiting on power since Saturday. Uh, Harry up or some shit like that. My first thought was, fuck you. I'm on vacation. If you watch all my videos on my channel, you would know that shit. And people, stop calling me early in the morning on vacation. It was two people that I talked to while I was on vacation. And I don't care what time of the day it is, and I will talk to them. Um, but other than that, my phone was ringing from 5.30 to 8 a.m., Every single day I was on vacation for people who I didn't uh, say I was going to talk to while I was gone. And there was a dis disturbing the hell out of me. 
And even with that, I was still not in a bad mood. All right, y'all. Holla back. Thank you for coming to this channel. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Peace.